Okay, next one, let's look at comments on the sampling distribution of x bar minus y bar. We know x bar is x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to x nx divided by nx. This is our x bar. And we assume x1 up to x nx is a simple random sample from normal population. And we also know normality is closed under linear combination, right? That means two random normal random variable, two normal random variable. You add or you subtract, still what? Normal. And a constant times a normal random variable, still normal. That's called what? Normality is closed under linear combination. So in this case, normality is closed under linear combination. X bar follow normal. With mean of the X bar is mu X. And variance of X bar is sigma square over NX, okay? Similarly, Y bar follow normal because normality is closer under linear combination, right? So Y bar also follow normal with mean Y bar, it's mu Y, and variance Y bar equal to sigma Y square over NY. This part is very similar to what you see in central limit zero, right? And then, what is the sampling distribution of x bar minus y bar? Let's see. We know x bar follow normal. Y bar also follow normal. A normal random variable subtract by another random, huh? another normal random variable. Normal plus normal or normal subtract normal. Stay with what? Normal. This is normality is closed under linear combination. So x bar minus y bar still normal. And its mean is expected value of x bar minus y bar. And its variance is what? Variance of x bar minus y bar. Let's first look at expected value of x bar minus y bar. Expected value of x bar minus y bar is e x bar minus e y bar. But e x bar is mu x, e y bar is mu y. Let's take a quick recall on the property of expected value. Property of what? Expected value. Property one, expected value of a constant. Property of expected value. Property one, expected value of a constant. It's a constant itself. Second one, expected value of a constant times x. It's a constant times what? Expected value of x. And property three, expected value of x plus y is ex plus ey. Do we need to have independent here? Independent is not required. For expected value, this is not required. But it, it will be required for what? For variance, okay? So let's look at, let's look at it. Expected value of x bar minus y bar is expected value of x bar minus expected value of y bar. By using property three, Expected value of x minus y is ex minus ey. Are you with me? Property three. Okay. So, expected value of x bar minus y bar is equal to ex bar minus ey bar, which is mu x minus mu y. Now, let's look at variance of x bar minus y bar. A lot of students make a mistake on this. They just say variance x bar minus variance y bar. This is wrong. Let's see why this is wrong. Let's rewrite this one as variance x bar minus y bar as variance of x bar plus minus one times y bar. And when x and y are independent, we can tell this one into two parts. Variance x bar plus variance of what? Minus one, minus one times y bar. But variance x bar is sigma x squared over nx. And when you pull the minus one out, what should you do? Property two. Variance of Cx is what? C square of variance x. So when you pull the minus one out, the minus one should be square. So this one should be variance x bar plus what? Variance y bar. Is that it? So the first term, sigma x squared over nx. The second term, sigma y squared over ny. This is variance x bar minus y bar. 
Although this is subtract, this is plus. So when this is plus, this is, this is still what? Still plus. Is that it? So it doesn't matter this is subtract or addition. This is always what? Addition. Is that it? Now, next one. If we standardize our test statistic, x bar minus y bar, subtract by its mean divided by standard deviation, we convert to z-score. So x bar minus mu x minus mu y over square root of sigma x squared over nx plus sigma y squared over ny. But in the most real life application, sigma x, sigma y, we don't know. So we estimate by Sx, Sy. That's a sample standard deviation from x and from y, okay? After we replace sigma x by Sx, sigma y by Sy, the resulting statistic is no longer z. It becomes what? T, student t distribution. And there are a couple ways to approximate its probability, okay? Um, t with no degree of freedom. First approximation is easier. You can just use minimum of nx minus 1 and ny minus 1. In our example, the treatment group, the size is 21. 21 minus 1 is 20. The control group, size is 23. 23 minus 1 is 22. So 20, 22, which one is smaller? 20 is smaller. So in our example, we're going to use t with 20 degree of freedom. And the other one give you better approximation. But better means what? The formula looks very complicated. Is that it? Looks very complicated. As for which one you're going to use in the exam, you need to follow up the instructor's guidance in the exam. Okay? If I ask you to use this one, you use this one. If I ask you to use this one, you use this one. But usually, this is used by what? Computer software package. Is that it? But if you look for the more accurate, or more, better answer, you use the second one, okay? 